Your Royal Highnesses, Honorable Ministers, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen. For 17 years, Dihat has served to bring together a diverse humanitarian family from around the world. Whilst current circumstances prevent us from being together in person, I am honored to contribute to this year's conference. It comes at a critical moment. Many countries are struggling with the economic and social fallout from the pandemic. But for the people of Africa, the focus of DIHAD this year, the vast humanitarian consequences of this crisis are of particular concern. The pandemic is disrupting healthcare, limiting access to education, compounding an existing food crisis for the most marginalized and vulnerable communities. What we are seeing in countries in crisis in Africa is also playing out in humanitarian crises around the world. With a huge surge in humanitarian needs since last year, 40% more people in need of assistance in 2021 compared with 2020, a tripling in the number of people in need since 2014, and at the same time, an ever greater funding gap. Last week, we put forward a major policy statement from the European Union, setting out ways in which we all need to up our game to meet this challenge. There is no magic wand, but we need hard and sustained work on several fronts. On funding, working closely together between donors to increase the overall funding base for humanitarian action, reaching out to those who have the potential to do more, while also working further on the efficiency of humanitarian action, building on the grand bargain that was agreed between a number of donors and agencies five years ago, and working together to protect the humanitarian space that is needed for principled humanitarian response while upholding international humanitarian law. We will want to work with all of you in taking this forward as a shared agenda because no single country or donor or region can have a decisive impact on the widening gap between the desperate needs we are seeing on the ground and the resources available. Meanwhile, as the European Union, we are strongly committed to helping address the consequences of the pandemic, both direct and indirect, and both globally and in Africa. As part of a Team Europe approach, bringing together the European Union, its member states and EU financial institutions, the European Commission has provided over 450 million euro in emergency assistance to address the impacts of COVID-19 in third countries. But of course, our emergency relief assistance can only address the consequences of the pandemic. We also need to see rapid rollout of vaccination campaign with fair and equal access, including in hard-to-reach areas. The European Union has already played a leading role in the development of the COVAX facility and helped to establish a humanitarian buffer which aims to reach the most vulnerable communities excluded from normal vaccination campaigns. At the recent G7 summit, we pledged 100 million euro in support of rolling out vaccination campaigns in Africa, working closely with the Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, as well as our humanitarian partners on the ground. This funding will prioritize countries with important humanitarian needs and support efficient vaccination campaigns in countries with weak health systems. Beyond this, we are committed to continuing to support African efforts for sustained development, for peace, for security, for the rule of law and for equality. These priorities will form part of a renewed EU-Africa partnership. My colleague, Commissioner Jutta Urpilainen, will be speaking to this later during the conference. I hope you have a fruitful exchange over the coming days. I look forward to seeing the outcomes of this year's DIHAD. And I sincerely hope that for the next DIHAD, 
we can be together in person. Thank you.